You know, folks, I've talked a lot here on the channel about how that I've followed politics my entire life. I've watched every election ever since I was a kid and uh, studied them very closely. My family didn't get the memo when someone said you shouldn't talk politics or religion. We've always done it, and I've always done it. Uh, the only difference is now I'm doing it with you guys here every day on YouTube, but uh, it's something that's always been talked around our dinner table my entire life. Never a day passes that the subject doesn't somehow come up. And I know there's someone out there right now going, man, that's depressing. You guys should talk about something else. I don't think we got it in us, folks. I think we're always going to be bringing it up around my house. And now I've turned it into a full-time job. So here we are. But every election that I've ever watched or, or focused on or paid attention to, and I've focused on all of them, someone always says, this is the most important election of our lifetime. That cliche gets used so much in every election that I almost feel bad using it. But folks, I've never seen democracy on the line like it is right now. And I've never seen a more weirder and stranger election than this one, because I've never seen anyone run the way Donald Trump has run. It's one of the most baffling things that I've ever seen. And he didn't even do this bad in 2016 or in 2020. But this go around, he is just absolutely doubling down on as much hate as he possibly can, doubling down on the division. He's doing nothing whatsoever to clean up his image from before, doing nothing to bring anyone into the fold, doing nothing to bring Republicans back into the fold who have left him high and dry. He's just doubling down and hoping that there's enough hatred out there to push him over the finish line. And it's truly disturbing. And for a guy that loves to talk about fake news and how the media loves to create fake stories, he sure doesn't have a problem using fake news to his advantage whenever he can or using fake AI-generated images to try to get his point across. And that's what I'm going to talk about here today uh, in this story here from the Midas Touch Network. This is at MidasNews.com. Uh, this is by J.D. Wolf. Trump uses fake AI images to attack migrant students. And folks, if you'll notice here lately, that's all he's doing is attacking migrants Every time the man opens his mouth, it's to put down migrants, and he blames them for every issue and every problem that we face in this country. But here he is caught using AI to push his extreme agenda. Take a look at this. Trump has one play that he constantly repeats, attacking migrants. Trump has even used Hitler's poisoning the blood of our country rhetoric and is hoping and counting on anti-migrant anti fever to thrust him into power once again shielding him from many of his legal woes. Look at this post that he posted. Now, right here it is, open border equals packed classrooms. Uh, he posted that on True Social. But now look when we dive in, folks, to the photo and we examine this photo, just how warped this whole thing is. What appears to be an overcrowded class is clearly AI generated upon closer inspection. This is clearly not a real person. Look at this. The student's head appears to be a school bag. Now look right here. Look, look at these. This is clearly not a real image. Uh, this student's hair, is, the student's hair is merged together. Some of them appear to have two heads. I can't believe I'm actually covering this in 2024. Uh, these three students have smaller blurry heads. One appears to have long flowing baggy mummy-like clothes wraps expanding around him. Look at this. Uh, Trump, let's see, there appears to be a bunch of extra teachers in the corner of the classroom, but also some strange structure with a head on it. Maybe they should just divide up the students. And then look here, the teacher's face is all blurry. There seems to be a smaller person coming out of the chalkboard, which is also another person's arm. These are clearly AI-generated images. Trump previously posted fake images, falsely claiming that Taylor Swift had endorsed him. Uh, this wasn't Trump's only attack on migrant children today. In another true social post, Trump used an article to attack kindergarten students in Philadelphia who he claimed were overcrowding the schools. However, the article's photo, which showed black, Asian, and Hispanic kindergartners, was a photo from 2015 and didn't Getty Images a New York Times piece that originally used the image specify the student's legal status. Trump also attacked migrant students at a rally in Aora. Trump has previously called for deporting students who don't speak English. Trump is threatening to disrupt communities, schools, and families if reelected. He hopes there's enough hate toward migrants to get himself elected again, and he is using fake AI images to push his hateful agenda. So when I think about the Trump supporters who are constantly accusing the left of using fake news, how do they feel when they see that? Is there ever a moment where they go, wait a minute, hold on? Uh, this wasn't real. This was fake. Why is he resorting to the tactics that he accuses the other side of? 
Or is it that they have so much hate and so much fear that it's okay with them that he does this? It's perfectly okay that he says it. I really think that for years to come, people are going to study the psyche of Trump supporters and how they came to how they came to be and how they came to think this way because it's truly disturbing that these people go out here and accuse us every day of being the ones that spread fake news. Yet when we bring the receipts and say, hey, look, here he is, uh, sure, in AI images, they're okay with it. And I really believe they're okay with it because their hate overrides their desire for the truth. And it's truly despicable. And what's even more despicable is he's going ahead now. He's saying all the quiet parts out loud. And when I first saw about this next clip, I said, are you sure he said that? Again, I can't believe that at this point in the game, I give the guy the benefit of the doubt. But I said to myself, no, come on. But no, he really did say that uh, people prefer the white guy. Take a look. Would you rather have the black president or the white president who got 1.7 billion off the price? I think they want the white guy right now. Yeah, and that won't be a deal breaker for any of his followers. Uh, he also called Kamala Harris the R word recently. That won't be a deal breaker for any of them because their hate overrides any common sense or decency. I really believe that it does. And I believe at this point in the game, if someone is still hanging with Donald Trump after all the receipts we bring on a daily basis, if they're still hanging with him at this point, folks, what other reason could they be supporting him other than just their hatred? Because you could say all day long, well, you know, they're, they're upset over the grocery bill. They're upset over the price of eggs. But I don't think that's it. I really don't think that's it because I think that uh, if Trump were to be reelected and the prices were sky high, I think they would find a way to blame it on Democrats. I don't think they would ever hold him accountable. I mean, do you think there could be a scenario where they say, hey, we got to get Trump out of there because my grocery bill is too high? Do you think they would say that? I don't because I think as long as he's around, He's going to empower them to be hateful. He's going to empower them to be cruel. And they're not going to care what kind of racist remarks he makes. They're not going to care about what kind of cruel remarks he makes. Uh, none of those things are going to matter to them because he empowers that hatred. And he can use fake, I, fake AI images all day, and they will continue to go out there and support him because he shares their hatred. And the sad part is he's counting on hatred to get him over the finish line. I have never, again, going back to studying elections my entire life, I've never seen one where the contrast was more different. I've never seen one where on one side of the aisle, you had someone who lifts people up and cares about all Americans and is willing to work alongside all Americans, willing to appoint Republicans into her cabinet and bring them into the fold. And she wants to hear their ideas and solutions too, versus a guy who is just absolutely going as far over the top as he can with the hateful rhetoric and the divisive rhetoric and using fake images or whatever he has to do to get ahead. I've never seen anything like this. And I don't know that we'll ever see it again. I, I, I really don't. Uh, this one's been one for the books and this one's been one that we will study for years to come. We will look back on this. I could write a whole book about how the hell did we get here and how the hell did this happen? And I may just have to end up doing that. But folks, I truly appreciate you guys so much for being here every day and supporting what it is that I do here on the channel. If you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button. It doesn't cost you anything to do so. And if you would like to check us out over on Patreon, we have the link in the video here today. So uh, be sure to check those things out. And uh, thank you guys so much for coming along on this ride with me.